He is the quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys, joining us from New York City, where he's hanging out with our good friend Eric Stone Street from Modern Family as part of the Ready, Raise, Rise campaign to raise awareness about cancer research. He is Dak Prescott. How are you, Dak? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Rich? I am doing fine. What were you doing on this very date last year when you were presumed to be the third-string quarterback going into training camp for the Dallas Cowboys? Uh, I can definitely tell you I'm, I wasn't doing what I'm doing today. Uh, <laughs> maybe I don't I have no idea what I was doing back then, just trying to work out and get on the field. Well, when did you first realize then that you had a shot um, at at – raising your your awareness if you will amongst the coaching staff up the dra- up the uh the the depth chart there in Dallas Dak uh, I mean I don't know just early on I was just going in I was, I was third string behind Tony and Kellen and it was just about giving myself a chance to to move in the second string to to just show the coaches what I had to offer and then uh, unfortunately in training camp Kellen went down uh then when Kellen goes down uh, Tony actually took the next day off as a break, just uh, you know, just from age and and health wise, and, and I stepped in and practiced with the ones. And I think from that moment going forward, I knew that I had the ability and I had the confidence in myself that that I could play if they needed me to. So it was that day after Kellen went down, and it was a a scheduled rest day for Tony. You get in there, and you thought amongst just in between your temples, I can do this. Yeah, I mean, I, I go in the huddle and you look around and you see all those Pro Bowl players and Hall of Fame, Jason Witten, uh, and it just kind of raises your, your your play, it raises your elevation of play and focus. And I knew from that moment uh, what it took to stay in that huddle. Uh, and I just I felt, as I said, but to myself that that I can play in this league. Did and when Tony did then go down in that preseason game against Seattle, did you at any point walk into? Uh, Jason Garrett's office and say, I got this? Oh, no, I didn't. I mean, when Tony goes down, I'm thinking third and eight. And, and I, that's all I'm thinking. I give credit to the coaches and everyone uh, for and allowing me to, to think so calm. And then that's just kind of how the season rolled is we didn't think about anything. We thought about what was ahead of us and what was, uh, what was now for us to do. Well, how were you able to keep your head in all this, Dak? Seriously. Uh, yeah, just, I mean, staying focused. Uh, and I think it shows... Um, it goes back to my mom and just everything that she taught me of uh, just being focused and being grounded and then obviously watching her um, her fight through cancer. Uh, and that's why I'm, I'm part of this, this campaign of the Ready, Raise, Rise campaign and um, just everything that my mom meant to me and everything that she taught me. Uh, losing her as a sophomore in college, uh, only 20 years old, there was so much that she taught me uh, that, that I that, – Losing her and that fight was so important to me. Now it's my turn to, to raise awareness and to help many Americans going through uh, what I went through. So you're saying that that lent you perspective for things like, say, going from third on the depth chart to top and Tony Romo maybe coming back and taking the job and you being able to just matriculate the ball down the field week in, week out? Is that essentially what uh, you're saying? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it does because that's something that, that I, can, I couldn't really control. What I could control was me playing well uh, and, and what it reversed and what it – has that connection to my mom is all I could control was support my mom and helping her. Uh, and I, I couldn't control whether Tony came back in and started or I couldn't control whether uh, my mom passed away or not. What I can control is helping her out, having a good spirit. And it's the same way I think about the game of football is uh, all I can control is me getting better and helping my teammates out and, and then staying focused and true to myself. So, um, and, and we'll definitely return to the subject of your mom, especially because it's part of the campaign that you're doing. Why do you think so many teams missed on you then, Dak? I'm not really sure. I think that um, at the quarterback position, um, it's hard to judge uh, what's in someone's heart and in, in between those temples, as you said. And I think that's a lot of the game. If you watch Peyton Manning, you watch Tom Brady and all these guys that have had tons of success in this league, they, they've won with their mind. They've won with their knowledge of the game. Uh, and I think that's something that, that, that's hard to, to judge. And they've won by being good leaders. And I think that's something that is truly hard to judge uh, in the little time that they're given uh, in the draft process. And you can ask college coaches and college teammates and the, the equipment guys how they act. But for the most part, I mean, every guy is going to be biased. So I think that, that um, hesitant coaches, that even though as high as Mississippi State had me, that they were just biased rather than, than it was true, that, that that's the way I am. I want to know everything I can about the game. I want to put my teammates first and push them to be better. Dak Prescott joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. So what advice would you give Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Kaiser, and uh, top drafted rookies who are going into this season and training camp not 
atop their depth chart. What advice would you give them, Dak? Uh, as I just said, control the things that you can control. Uh, and, the, and the one thing they can do is they can control how, how fast they learn that playbook. And re regardless of whether they, it's watching film or writing it down, that study their tails off. Make sure they're learning as much as they can, as quick as they can, and giving themselves a chance and opportunity uh, to be ready to play if their number's called and when their number is uh, numbers called. And, and then being true, being true to themselves of, um, if they're a locker room guy, if they're a rah-rah guy, be that. If you're not, don't necessarily try to be that. Just be yourself and, and uh, get to know your teammates and uh, get to earn their respect. And I think the best way you can do that is by actions. And that's the way I, th I felt like I did of earning the respect of a guy like Jason Witten was not going to talking to Jason Witten every day, but was studying my playbook, giving myself a chance to, to win and help Jason Witten out and uh, just staying focused. And I think those young guys uh, can do well in this league. I know they have all the talent. Uh, but if they, they stay true to themselves and, and study this playbook, they have a chance. Well, what was Tony Romo's role in you being able to ascend and also control what you can control, Dak? Uh, yeah, I mean, Tony did an amazing job of helping me out. Uh, and I think that's what, what Tony realized is that he couldn't necessarily control whether he was going to play or not. But what he could control was our relationship. And uh, me and Tony, I felt, did a great job. And I commend Tony and thank you so much for that of – uh, of being another coach for me, of helping me out of on the game, uh, in the middle of a game, at practice, on the field, off the field, uh, giving me advice. And uh, as a guy, as he went through exactly what I went through, of taking over the position from an older veteran uh, and knowing what it's like to be a quarterback of the Dallas Cowboys of just helping me out. So did it never get uncomfortable, Dak? Uh, it truly never did. Uh, just in the fact, and that's why I say I commend him, is, um, I mean, I don't know how he felt personally. I mean, obviously I know as much of a competitor he is, as he is that he wanted to play, uh, that as much success as he had in his league, he probably felt that he should play. Um, but it never did. And as I said, he always was so helpful to me, and I felt it was genuine, uh, and I commend him for that. Okay, a couple more minutes for Dak Prescott of the Dallas Cowboys here. All right, let's get to your mom. Who was she? Who was your mom, Dak? Uh, my hero. Uh, everything to me. Um the one that would go out there in the summer of when I was in college and time my 40s and time my, my conditioning um, that, that stayed on me about my grades and education was a selfless, hardworking woman. Uh, and I think it shows through me and not only me, but my brothers and, and uh, the people she affected uh, within her life. And, and her passing, how did that, obviously, I, I, one would know or assume how the passing of a mom would affect a devoted son, but how did it affect you as you were trying to make – uh, a career for yourself and get an education for yourself right in the middle of college, losing your mom, Dak? Yeah, losing my sophomore year just makes you grow up faster. Uh, and it makes you become a man a lot quicker. And uh, my mom told me when she was sick to allow her to be my story. And then hearing that at 20 years old or 19 or whatever it was that she told me she was sick, that's the last thing. I, I, mom, I don't need a story if it means you having cancer. But uh, losing her, and then that's immediately what I did. I, I said, I'm going to make my mom my story, and I'm going to get my get my degree. I'm going to get my master's. Uh, I'm going to put everything I have into the game of football because that's what my mom would want me to do. Uh, and now it's giving me this amazing platform to uh, to honor my mom, not only on the football field but off uh, in this campaign, the Ready, Raise, Rise, and, and helping other family members out uh, that are, as I said, can relate to what I'm going or what I went through, uh, and I know what they're going through. Is it true you text your mom? On occasion, and uh, yeah, don't, um, I mean, I go to the notes on the iPhone and just uh, simply just write. Sometimes my mom was, I said, everything. The one I vented to, uh, the one I, I would show my weaknesses to, uh, and so at times that that allows me to do that of just uh, getting it out of me of just going to my notes and then just simply just writing away, uh, and it definitely helps. How many times did you put something in your notes on your phone last year during the season? Uh, yeah, I mean a few times, um, a couple of times during the season. I uh, know preseason, I uh, know the first game I ever played, uh, training camp, just situations where uh, me and my mom talked about as a kid growing up of wanting to play in the NFL, of wanting to play for the Dallas Cowboys, of, um, and then reaching those moments, those, you know, those moments when you're on the foot, where I'm on the, the steps of doing that, or I'm at the door about to open it up. Those are times that, that just, it just allows me to just humble myself and to allow me to realize where I came from is just to go to those notes and uh, talk to my mom. ReadyRaiseRise.com. The goal is to raise $150,000 for research uh, by the end of next month. That's how people can get involved to try and, um, and, and try and eradicate cancer as best we can.
Dak? Uh, yeah, July 31st. Uh, that's that's the, the the deadline and the goal that we want to we want to reach. And as simple as you said, go to readyraiserise.com. Uh, and there's actions that you can take on there. And with each action, you receive a point. Uh, and the actions are sending an e-card uh, to a family member, uh, maybe the one that's going through cancer, to brighten their day, uh, educating yourself on immuno-oncology research uh, or just the ways that we can help fight against cancer. Uh, and then my personal favorite is raising a flag for cancer uh, as, as the support, as it's just your, your knowledge uh, supporting of that person, as I did for my mom. Uh, and as I said, each, a- each action you get a point, and then Bristol Myers Squibb has a promise to donate $150,000 when we reach our goal uh, by July 31st. And uh, I saw you were on uh, Good Morning America, and you've been campaigning with Eric Stone Street. You do know, as I'm sure he's, he's he bent your ear about this, he is a diehard Chiefs fan, Dak. Has... Oh, yeah, trust me. We've talked about November the 5th uh, when the oh, Chiefs yes. come to AT&T Stadium. And? Uh, so we've covered that. Okay. Uh, how, how did you cover that in, in a way? Dak, I mean, is he coming? Uh, yeah. Is he going to be there? He's, you know, he's yeah, he said he's going to try to be there. He's working on his schedule. Uh, he said he doesn't know how the filming and, and that time is as far mm-hmm. as the way that is, but he's going to try to be there, as you said, as Dow Hard Chief fan as he is. And then I promised him uh, that he had see a good game from the Cowboys. And I didn't I didn't know if at all the games of Chiefs that he wanted to come to that one, but <laughs> – uh, we nice. joked back and forth and had a good time. We did on Good Morning America and half throughout this morning. And so I guess season two, just to wrap it up, Dak, I mean, how 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 to improve on this? I mean, what an incredible year you had with Ezekiel Elliott back there, the two of you guys, what you did for Dallas, just to, double-handedly right there. How, how do you follow this up, Dak Prescott? Uh, Yeah, I mean, I think it just goes into staying true to myself, um, knowing everything that it took for me to get here and that nothing needs to change. Um, And the fact of, and I think just honestly as simple as those messages that I said I sent my mom of just keeping myself grounded, knowing the hard work it's going to take, the only thing that matters is what I can control is helping my teammates, uh, getting better at the quarterback position on and off the field, uh, and give, uh, essentially just giving the Dallas Cowboys a chance to win every game. And, and, and as much as I love you, Rich, and I listen to the, the media and the critics and what people have to say, uh, just focusing on my game uh, and the Dallas Cowboys and, as I said, helping Zeke and Dez and getting the defense right. And I think we give ourselves a good chance, and I know I'm, I'm going to get better okay. going forward thinking that. Well, lastly, well, since you said you love me, Dak, can you, give me a, can you send a message from me to Ezekiel Elliott. Can you do that? I can do that. Okay, say this is from Rich Eisen. Say, yeah. enjoy the Michigan Wolverines you just drafted. <laughs> okay? All right. Enjoy, and, and, and don't let him forget that the next first-round selection after him for the Dallas Cowboys was a Michigan Wolverine. Wolverine. Okay? And we that, got two Wolverines in this draft. That is correct. You got Jordan Lewis and you got Taco Charlton, and they are going to ball out on the defensive side. Just By the way, this is all stuff you're supposed to tell Ezekiel. And, <laughs> and say that we will see you, this is we, in November. Okay? That works. That works. I got you. Thank you, Dak. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. it, Rich. You got Thank it. You, me you got it. It's Dak Prescott of the Dallas Cowboys here on the Rich House. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that, please download our app. There's lots of fun things there other than just more of the videos you just saw. You can call us from the app. You can email us from the app. Just download it. Trust me, you'll enjoy it.